Hola. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. You look sharp always. Hey. Hi. Oh, over there in that corner. Good morning, everyone. We're about to start. If you want to take a seat, hopefully you got some coffee and some water, and some juice, some kolaches over here. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. You guys excited? This is our favorite time of year annual meeting. So um, I know that we just ran out of coffee, so we've made another request. So when you see them come back in, we'll have a little bit more for you. So we're very excited that you joined us this morning. We are the Tourism Development Department for Visit San Antonio. Please come in and join us. And we focus on uh, global and domestic tourism. Today in our breakout session, um, we'll focus really a lot on global tourism. We have some great numbers to share with you. Let me go to the agenda. I'm Dora Benavides, and I'm the Director of Tourism Development. And I'm Francisco Gallegos, Associate Director of Tourism Development. And we'll be doing this presentation together. So in the Tourism Development Department, we are focused on international and domestic leisure travelers. And so we focus on driving demand for those segments um, through selling channels, promotions, campaigns, and in addition to that, we also support the air service development um, activity along with the airport. So we're gonna share a little bit of information regarding that. The ultimate goal of all of our efforts, of course, are to drive demand and visitation to the market. Today we'll talk about global strategy. We'll share air service development. We'll actually take a little bit of a dive into sales channels. What are those? Um, and how do I take advantage of them? Um, and then we'll end with member engagement. How can I engage with your department? What are those opportunities? We're gonna share some three key areas um, that we think will be advantageous for you. In terms of market deployment, we have a staff of five that is in our department. I focus on Mexico and Canada. Francisco focuses on Europe. Alex focuses on the domestic markets. Tamar Atia, who just started with us this year, focuses on Latin America and Asia Pacific. And then Adelita Ramos is our assistant who really helps us get it all done. So I'm gonna turn it over to Francisco to cover just the first couple of slides on global strategy. Our global development strategy. So we put this together in 2022, fiscal year 2022. So if you take a look at what was happening in 2022, right, we have two UNESCO designations, right? We have all this international gateway connectivity. We have very unique neighborhoods. San Antonio is one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, right? So there's a lot of things happening already within the destination. So we said, okay, we'll look. We're about to have IPW in 2023, right? Very, very big deal. We needed to create a multi-year strategy with a phase and approach going all the way to 2030. And we need to identify key partnerships in these markets. Visit USA UK offices, the International Trade Administration. And we also knew too that we needed to solidify our position in the international marketplace because if we didn't have a very robust plan, someone else is gonna take advantage of that and they'll lead it and we'll lose out. And last but not least, we need to keep this plan very, very fluid for any opportunities that might come up, such as the one we just saw with Germany, with our new transatlantic flight, right? Very, very big deal. So we had to keep some plans fluid. We focus on international markets for a number of reasons. Of course, domestic is very important to us. But if you take a look at the average length of stay and the visitor spend for the international clientele, if you look at these numbers, international, they stay much longer. So this is on average number of nights. And if you look at visitor spend, international per person, $1,554. So you can see why they're very important to us as well. 
I'm going to go ahead and give it to Dor to go over some very nice positive numbers for us from international markets. So we know that international visitors stays longer and spends more money. So what do those numbers actually look like in terms of visitation to San Antonio? So what we put together here is some historical data in terms of international visitation to the market and then forecast from 23 to 26. And so we're using 2019 as the benchmark. So we had two and a half million visitors in 2019, and when we look at 2023, we're currently forecasted through the end of December to hit 2.5 million as well. And so we'll finally be breaking even with 2019. In 2024, we're projected to be at 3.3, 3.7 in 25, and 3.9 in 26. So what does that look like for the key markets from our global strategy? So right now, um, as I mentioned before, we're anticipating a 32% increase in international visitation in 2024 over 2023. And I'd like to focus on the cream columns for 2023 on global development markets as well as 2024. So Mexico in 2023, we're looking at 2.3 million and we're anticipating a 30% increase in visitation from Mexico. Canada, we're anticipating a 16% increase in 2024, 14% in the UK, 35% from Germany and 41% from China. There's also a couple of other columns if you want to take a look at them. We've got 2019, what the comparison is for those markets. You can see for Mexico, um, we've already surpassed the 2019 number. However, in 2023, we were still seeing some gaps uh, compared to uh, 2019. And then you can see in 2022, we had substantial growth in all markets and continue uh, that trend for 2024. Any questions? Okay. Francisco. Thank you, Dora. Okay, so remember, we're back in 2022. We have all, we have this whole environment, right? In San Antonio, we have a lot of good data assets happening. We want to put the phased in approach. So which ways, which ones do we look at? Phase one for us for fiscal year 23 was, of course, we had IPW 2023 take place. This is where we decided to launch Europe. In 2023, fiscal year, uh, fiscal year 23, we launched the UK market. Germany, of course, is one that we just launched recently with our fluid plan with Condor, right? So we focused on, or we are focusing on United Kingdom and Germany. Phase two, this is another one that we're launching uh, this fiscal year, starting October 1st in China. Looking at primary markets with Shanghai, Beijing, and Guangzhou. And then, if you look at 2026, we're looking at opportunities in the Latin American market. We've seen growth from Brazil, from Argentina, and from Colombia. And phase four, we're looking at outside of China. This is now Japan and South Korea. But we're also taking a look at Australia and New Zealand. Uh, for specifically in the Australian and New Zealand markets, there's really good international airlift into Texas. And it's, um, I, just, I do just want to say in this area that we did, there was an extensive amount of research and continually is ongoing the research for this, these markets. Um, we look at airlift into Dallas, Houston, and Austin. Uh, we, of course, we look at airlift and what the potential is for San Antonio. Um, frequencies, we looked at visitation to the state overall. So there's a lot of other elements that kind of help drive our decision um, to land on these markets. So when we launch a market like the UK or like Germany, what do we do when we launch a specific market? We look at hiring an agency, having an in-market representation. That means we'll have an agency, we'll have a proxy as Visit San Antonio within those markets, singing the praises of San Antonio on the trade and media channels. We'll also launch tourism trade campaigns. We'll look at familiarization trips, bringing clientele into the market. We'll do sales and media missions. We'll do also hire a social media agency so we can gain a good following uh, in those countries. We'll also do a lot of boosting on social media. So we have a lot of direct-to-consumer messaging that creates that awareness on the destination. And we'll do a lot of paid digital marketing as well too. So remember, this is UK, this is Germany, now this is also China. 
Any questions? Okay, so look, we're gonna just talk a little bit about air service development on, from a high level perspective. Visit San Antonio it collaborates with Greater SATX, but more importantly, with the San Antonio International Airport on air service development. And so we assist them with pitching to attract air service, and then we also develop financial packaging to, to actually ask that airline to come here. I don't know um, how familiar some of you may be, but it costs money to bring a flight to San Antonio. It costs the airline on average, and I'm gonna defer to JL if I get this wrong, but on average $12 million to establish a flight in a market. And so they're looking for us to help support them and help guarantee their success of that flight. And I just wanna say, we have, we're so proud to work, I'm so excited to accept them, the International Business uh, Manager for the Airport System here in San Antonio. We're, we're delighted to work with the San Antonio and Greater SATX together. Uh, we have a very aggressive team at the airport, actually Dora just came back with us from Istanbul, Turkey, mm -hmm. where we just draw all the global airlines. But we're, we're moving extremely aggressively as you noted, we have a new, uh, recently new airport director who used to be at Bush Bush International and Hobby, the number three guy, so he signs extremely aggressive. We're putting two and a half billion dollars in the airport, so he wants immediate action, and with this partnership, it's really working very well. We did lose Latin America to Italy. We, 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 Dora and I and the team went back and forth, met Panama, but I think we'll eventually get it. Austin got it, Copa Airlines. But that, that we keep on going with great success stories to Germany. Hopefully, UK will come in soon. We're working with Canada very aggressively. So it's a very good team we have. We have a lot of cohesiveness mm -hmm. right now, and we're moving forward in a very aggressive manner. Mm -hmm. I think the other point to make as well is that it takes a really long time to convince an airline to invest the $12 million. Mm -hmm. So I was telling somebody, like we, we just had the Condor announcement. I remember in 2018 driving around uh, the route planner in San Antonio giving them a tour. So that's just an example of, they had already, the airport already started the relationship, but all those years of selling and convincing and making, you know, waiting until it made financial sense. Uh, Susan them. has a question right here. <laughs> Yes, we okay. have in the past. The airport, the, op yeah. the airport gets a specific incentive, okay. and then the private sector, which Greater SATX and Visit San Antonio mm -hmm. and other players, corporations with that. And then the 10,000 pound gorilla is Austin, so we're always competing mm -hmm. with, yeah. we have a major corporate base, mm -hmm. here, but we're always oh. trying to push the other, the other incentive from the private sector, because mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of money that our airline has, which is $250 million, it's like how they have to pay the mortgage, they have to fill the planes 80% of the time each way. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole business model. It's not because they just want to fly to Paris. It's not going to happen that way. Mm -hmm. They have to work as a business model. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I think what's key is that as a community, we have to support the flight, meaning we have to take the flight when we go to Frankfurt. We have to take the flight when we go to Mexico. Um, so that way we can support it um, and uh, they can continue to add capacity and or add new flights because the route because there's enough demand to add those the other way that we really work with um, with the airport is in providing market research data we have visa mastercard um, data on visitors spend how long they're staying what what are those key markets who are the top 10 markets what is the visitation to our website so all of that information really plays into that pitch and uh, from our perspective, from Visit San Antonio's perspective, the destination on, on convincing that flight to come. And then so great, we get the flight, right? And then what happens? So we work very closely with the airline in coordinating an inaugural event for the flight, should they want it. In this case, I will say Condor has told us they don't want an inaugural in Frankfurt. So we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do with them there. Right. Um, but in addition to that, we develop campaigns with them with their strong partners, we find out who of their selling channel that we can have and establish relationships with to again, drive demand and drive visitation, visitation as well as drive selling seats. And Dora, that makes a point, but we have a wonderful airport director. Yes. Yes. 
Welcome. It's all good, Jesus. <laughs> Welcome and congratulations on the announcements. Um, I will say we were just in the meet, in a, in a meet. yes, sir. Uh, when you speak about Istanbul, just one item point can be very important. Hemisphere situate in cross hemisphere because the hemisphere was invited. The other hemisphere was invited where? In Sofia, who is only five hours to, to drive from Istanbul. That's why Sofia is the sister by 68, the fulfillment city when the two hemispheres happen. Mm -hmm. I participate in the one hemisphere. <coughs> I was thinking oh, wow. it's unforgettable. We never, we never built nothing. We only made the flags of Lenin, Stalin. This was the time, but it's very important to, when you go to Istanbul, to see if you can combine to Sofia. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. And Jesus, maybe you correct, correct me if I say this wrong, but we've basically, uh, the airport has basically had one new flight announcement for the last five weeks. Is that correct? That is correct. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. How are I can tell you what three of them are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the segue. <laughs> yes, sir. When you talked about other uh, locations, and, and promoting England and, and Germany. You didn't mention Spain, and I say that because I've had a lot of people I've talked with here in San Antonio mm -hmm. who have gone to Spain or want to go to Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, are we looking at uh, tying a Spanish airline in mm -hmm. uh, with San Antonio as well? I you would know, defer to the airport on that. Pitching, uh, the numbers are not there. Like, we always have to still try and 80% of it each way. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that the French also are interested in mm -hmm. other countries, so. Mm -hmm. We're looking at numbers, and it's all, it's all a business case. Right. So we definitely, they're definitely on their radar. Right. I can tell you right now, um, I think our, vis our visitation from Spain is between 4,500 and 5,000 annually. So it's a, it's a lower number. However, remember that last piece of the, of the strategy and tax tactics is to remain flexible and to continue with that market research on an ongoing basis should that opportunity arise that we're ready to shift our, our strategy. And although Europe, uh, the primary markets are the UK and Germany, the secondary markets that, we're, that we see to make sure we have experienced this product, these kinds of things, it's the Netherlands, France, and Spain is also in there too. So the airport had these three recent announcements. We have Condor Airlines, Frankfurt, service starts on May the 17th, 2024. I think Susan said she just received, was it a group, Susan, or a individual, an individual traveler staying for seven nights already? So we're hoping they flew in on Condor. Um, anyway, service starts May 17th, and um, they will fly Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, then that was followed by announcement by Vivero Bus on the direct flight from Querétaro, uh, to San Antonio, and that will launch December 4th, mm -hmm. and will be on Mondays and Fridays, and then the Thorion Fright, which starts July the 2nd, Tuesday and Saturday. The other two announcements were Newark Spirit Airlines, mm -hmm. and then Southwest Airlines, oh. and now we're going to be flying to Burbank. Burbank. Okay. Starting. Perfect. Any other questions on this slide? Or? It is that was very important because the Toyota suppliers kept on pitching to us. We need it, we need it. That friends and family leisure can be big for Toyota. Mm -hmm. okay. Beautiful city. Mm -hmm. And Torreon is more of an industrial city, a lot of business, but a lot of friends and family movement. You're going to see a lot. Very wealthy area in terms of uh, uh, minerals and business, so it's a great market here. Okay. I, I think one of the other great ties with Gareth was that some of the designers were attempting to put up emissions stuff that came from so I think that's kind of an interesting oh. The so cultural fine. tie. Mm -hmm. yeah. So great. I hear the Camino is the only one in the Americas, right? In San Antonio? I think so, and they have a, a really great Camino de Santiago in Spain. Mm -hmm. Basically, get credit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. 
very, very nice, um, where uh, sales channels with the uh, Camino, you're going to see some things where, where we pitch, where we develop product. Uh, but let's look at sales channels and let's dig in a little bit here as well. When we are looking at pitching San Antonio in a market, uh, we have to work hand in hand with marketing with media relations, right? They all, we all have a different arm in, into everything here. If you look at marketing specifically, what are they doing? They're generating awareness for San Antonio, top US uh, destination to consider in each of the countries that we're supporting with, uh, as well as with tourism campaigns. Media relations, what are they doing? They're growing awareness for San Antonio through earned media and social media coverage. Tourism development, what is it exactly that we're doing with all of that? Well, we're developing campaigns and promotions that will drive awareness to increase visitation to San Antonio. So we need to have awareness built direct to the consumer in marketing, as well as with media relations, right? Social media, remember we're, we, we initiate a social media agency, we do social media boosting in the UK and Germany, China as well. So that, that's good, right? The consumer then learns about San Antonio, where we're located, what the experiences are. Okay, that's great. So let's say you're a consumer, you live in Munich, and you saw something on San Antonio and you thought, oh, this is really cool. Great, let me go to a travel agent and let me book this trip. Well, we have to make very, very sure that that travel agent knows how to pitch San Antonio, knows where to find San Antonio uh, product information, like what's there to do, where should I stay, all of these kinds of things. So if we go to the next slide, you'll see that every single one of these channels has something to do with the product that we have here in San Antonio. So we will run campaigns and promotions through receptive operator channels. And the term receptive operator, you hear this and you're like, okay, what's a receptive operator? Like, what is that about? This is a company or companies that would book and contract hotel rates, sometimes they can connect to you already, dynamically, if you're chain. Uh, these are companies that also book and look for experiences that they can put in their bucket that they can sell to wholesalers all around the world, right? So we'll do campaigns with those guys. We'll also build product with experience and ticket resellers. And we'll also promote through those channels as well. There's Get Your Guide. It's a company that's been growing exponentially. Their competitor is Viator, but Viator is the beast of the experience world in terms of a buyer. We've done a campaign with Get Your Guide to build awareness on our destination through their channels in Germany, and we did it domestically as well. Online travel agencies, absolutely we work through those channels too. Expedia, Price Travel, Flight Center, Flight Center is really big in the UK market as well as Canada, as well as in Australia, which is where they're headquartered. And we've also done campaigns with airlines. I mean, Aero Mexico, we've done quite a bit with Aero Mexico. Viva Aerobus, Volaris, we've even done campaigns with Delta and we're gonna be doing quite a bit of campaigns with Condor as well. Motor Coach, so how do we hit that market and how are we promoting through those channels? Well, we attend the trade shows that are there. We have some that come to San Antonio as well. This is where we attract and we're promoting to the mature and the student youth market. Travel agents, right? Remember I was talking about consumer sees a social media ad or something about Visit San Antonio, or they see some digital banner ad when they're going to TripAdvisor, whatever it might be. Then they go to a travel agent to book their trip. Why are they using travel agents to book a trip to San Antonio, right? For you, you might think, oh, I mean, I'll just go online, I'll book my trip, it's no big deal, right? It's easy. For you it is but you live in Munich, you've never been to Texas before, you're not just gonna come to San Antonio, you're gonna go all over the state. You have a complex itinerary, right? And you need someone on the other side or to help you throughout this whole process to book this trip for you. So what do we do? We do campaigning through their channels. There's one consortium that we're part of and that's called Virtual, so it's a luxury, mark, uh, luxury uh, gathering of um, luxury travel advisors. We also do campaigns for the travel agents on GDS. Have you ever heard of GDS? You know what that is? It's a global distribution system. 
Sabre, Apollo, Rolksben, all these other systems where you go in there as a travel agent, you book availability, you look up availability and flights, hotels, you can book all of that. But well, we do campaigns on GDS as well. Training, we have two training platforms, USA Discovery with Brand USA and Trapo. Training is incredibly important. You can talk to a travel agent, sometimes even domestically and even more, more than likely internationally. You ask them, what do you know about San Antonio? Uh, I heard you have a, like a canal there or something going on. You have some old buildings. We've heard about the Alamo. You know what I mean? That's, so we need to expand on that. At least we have that connection with them, but we expanded a little bit more with additional trainings. These international and domestic tour operators, these are guys who package destinations. And we look at the ones specifically who package US to destinations very well. And that could be someone like Mega Travel in Mexico or Travel Bag in the UK market or Canusa, which is a specialist on Canada and the USA destinations in Germany. So just a little bit, I do want to share, we did, um, we have GDS campaigns on there for travel agents and we had huge success with our first test uh, with those GDS campaigns last year in the fall. Uh, we ran a $20,000 campaign and saw a return on investment of right about a million over the time frame of the campaign for room nights. In terms of get your guide, this summer we ran, which is attraction focus, they sell attraction tickets. Um, Francisco coordinated a campaign with them and um, they ended up selling 6,324 tickets over a three month period. Um, so we continue to test, readjust, invest more money to see where we can really make those impacts for hotels and attractions. The year over year we saw in revenue just with Get Your Guide, we got them to a pretty close to a million dollar account for us. Like it's, we've done some major things with, with those companies, which is why it's important, right? If you're not on these channels, mm -hmm. you need to be on those channels right. because we're promoting through them and that's how you get more awareness, more visibility. That's why these things are important. Yeah. As far as the Camino, we are in conversations with the Camino so that they can work out how they can be, have product that would be available on these channels as well. That's why it's another example. I know we're not hosting the World Cup, but other cities in Texas are. Yes, Houston, Dallas. And the thing is, if it's going to be in Houston and Dallas, they're not going to stay in Houston and Dallas. They're definitely going to come to San Antonio as well. So, well, I mean, it's kind of like when the tide rises, we all rise together. Uh, we definitely see that for the state of Texas, but yes, we'll be working off of that as well too. And so I think the key message here is, you know, we have several campaigns that we're doing throughout the year. If you're not contracted as a hotelier with a receptive operator um, or as an attraction, you know, and you want to learn a little bit more about it, please get with us. We can help walk you through the process. We can educate you on what that process is. Um, and help you on the road to selling additional rooms when you need them. Same thing for ticket resellers. Um, and then on the online travel agency, our strategy there for hotels is not to have a rate-driven promotion. The promotions are really created to drive demand to a landing page where you as a hotel can decide what rate, when you sell it, and um, when it makes most business sense for you. So that's really our focus there. Member engagement, okay. So these sales channels we just discussed, where can you see some of these guys? Where can you start some of these conversations with these guys? We just hosted a very big conference, right, in May. May 20th through the 24th, I will never forget those dates, right? None of us will ever forget. Those are the dates, right? Now I'm over here thinking, I was like, did I say it wrong? Um, IPW, registration is now open for that opportunity. It's gonna be in Los Angeles. It's in early May this time around. We will take up to 15 different organizations. Highly recommend, if you haven't yet, please scan this QR code so that you can get access for registration there. We'll also have a, a spring mission taking place in Mexico City. That is going to be early March, and the cost to participate there is 1500 I'm sorry, the cost for IPW is 5000 And we're not going to have the additional big booths on the site. It's just going to be within a shared space, a 20 by 30 space. 
the last opportunity that we have, and it's not, I don't want to say last, but this is just one I'm pointing out here. There's other opportunities that you would find here throughout the year, but it's the Texas Bandmasters Client Appreciation Event. That one is for the student youth market specifically. We have student youth tour operators who are exhibiting during Texas Bandmasters Association. If you, let me put it this way. This conference happens here every single year in July. These student youth tour operators that come over here, they know San Antonio very, very well. So we tend to highlight what's new or what has changed when we're looking at a venue to host them. So if you're interested in being a venue to host this conference, I'm sorry, this client appreciation event, you can reach out to us or to Alex Gonzalez as well. And I have like two minutes. Just to point on IPW, uh, you know, as you, as everybody recalls, right, we hosted IPW 2023, and yes, we knocked it out of the park. And to this day, wherever we go, we still hear people raving about. I can't yes. believe what a great job. I think I Susan it. just had somebody last week, and so. But I, but the point I want to make is that if you attended in 2023. If you remember, we talked about it was a three-year commitment. If you really want to get into the international market, you've got to commit your business to participate three years so that you can develop relationships first with those clients, contract, and determine what your business strategy needs to be from a pricing standpoint so that you can make money off of it. And then in the third year, you're sailing, right? You've got the relationship. You know what your pricing strategy is, and now you're making the dollars and the revenue that you need to make your business successful. So join us, please, at IPW 2024. We have uh, three partners signed up so far. So we have 12 slots left. 12 slots left. left. OK. Well, we also do, of course, familiarization trips. And uh, are you, is everyone here pretty much familiar with a familiarization trip? Familiar with a familiarization trip. <laughs> yes? We know what a, what a fam trip. In other words, it's our opportunity to bring in clientele, right? They could be on media channels. They can be on the tourism trade channels that we just talked about. And it's our opportunity to really highlight the destination while they're here. I can't tell you how many years I've been pitching San Antonio and you're trying to convey this image and a vibe to them on a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> It's not the same, right? It is not the same as opposed to actually having them here. When we get clients here, when they visit your hotel, your attraction, your sightseeing, tour experience, whatever it might be, they always say, oh my God, I finally get it. This is what you've been saying. And luckily, IPW considered that as a gigantic familiarization trip, right? Um, just a major opportunity for just us. I mean, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, in London as well, just nonstop, every single time. IPW was so great in San Antonio. Oh my God, I love this one. <laughs> you know, we're still getting it. I, and I love it. I love hearing that. But familiarization trips are very, extremely important to us because there's nothing better than to actually have them in the destination so that they know how to sell it, they know how to go back to their office and pitch San Antonio to their colleagues as well. So it does create awareness for, for all of you guys too. And so an example of that is um, in September, we brought in 20 travel buyers oh. and media from Mexico City, Guadalajara, and Monterrey. And we, they were in San Antonio from Monday through Thursday, departed uh, Thursday morning. Uh, and so it was just a really immersive experience. We themed them. This uh, mission that we completed, or this mission slash fam, um, was focused on cultural and heritage, and so they really got to see the museums. Many of them had never been to the museums before. These are really impactful travel buyers, um, and like Francisco said, we're looking for your partnership, um, and so uh, please, you know, when we call or when we send that, we will send all of, the, all of these through SimpleView, and we send this opportunity to you. Please, please take note um, and really consider it. And I think we're running out of time. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm getting the, I'm getting the signals. Uh, sweepstakes opportunities. We've done sweepstakes opportunities on airline social media channels. We've done them through newsletters. This is our opportunity, yes, to keep them on top of mind, right? We're creating awareness, create awareness, create awareness. We're working with key clients to create excitement about the destination, yes. Like Ido Mexico was an example. We're leveraging more awareness, but more importantly, 
we are creating visibility for the San Antonio brand with followers of another prominent brand. Okay, so take that into consideration. So whenever we are looking for a sweet text opportunity and we get when we land on one, when we send the communication out, hey, would you like to sponsor this or that, whatever it might be, it has to do with our creating awareness on the destination. And then plus it gives you visibility as an attraction, hotel, experience, uh, whatever that might be as well too. And we'll send these out through Simple View as well too. So I think we've run out of time for questions, but I think we might have a time for like two or three. We've got to make our way down to the general session. Oh, thank Yay. you. Uh, I know that the DMO will really heavy um, conventions, mm -hmm. but we're one of the, we have the great attractions here. We have one of the two things in the theme parks. Mm -hmm. We have the two uh, most expanded free attractions at the River Walk and the Alamo. We have mm -hmm. three of the top ten paid attractions with six slides to World Zoo. Um, <coughs> if you look at your, your the destination, I know you, you showed the numbers for international travelers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of that, it looks like uh, international is about 10% of the mm -hmm. leisure travelers. Mm -hmm. So when you guys budget your scope for um, you know, attracting travelers, is it proportionate to the percent? I'm sure the cost of acquisition for an international traveler is more than domestic, but yes. how do you decide in your budget how much to allocate to international versus in the States? Um, within our department budget? Right now, honestly, I'm gonna, here's what I will say, is that we are investing more in global strategy now than we have ever in my career, and I've been there 16 years, and so the last two years, more internationally. Um, our focus is really to uh, drive the higher spend, and then, so domestically, we really work through Alex, and then driving the visitation through Expedia, so we're definitely spending more globally but we certainly have a uh, commitment to the domestic market. But I will say that the marketing strategy really covers domestic, that piece. Any other questions? Yeah. Ricky? So, I just want to know uh, what market are we going after and what will be the, what, what, what are the markets that we are competing now in, in terms of... Uh, on the international? On the international. Um, Mexico. Can you okay. want to put it back to that one? Oh, oh, that's fine. Uh, there, yeah. yeah, Mexico was, of course, we have the, we're, we're active in but the Mexican market, or market what do you mean? Oh, domestic going, markets? Yeah, what domestic the, markets are going also after Mexico that we know that we need to Ah, Houston, I see. I think Houston, in Texas, it's pretty Dallas, much, it's I don't everybody. think Austin is. Austin currently no. doesn't have anything allocated for Mexico. They're really focused on the UK, but, but now that they've lost the Virgin flight, I don't know if anybody's heard that, they'll probably readjust some dollars and, and retarget. But um, Houston is, is a pretty big competitor. competitor. I will tell you, mm -hmm. when we look at the tourism economics numbers for our competitive set, we are outperforming. We are number one in market share for Mexico. McAllen would be actually more of a competitor than Houston. Than Houston would be. Mm -hmm. And McAllen, by the way, is getting a new nonstop flight um, as well. So you can see Mexico is major competition um, there as well, too. Uh, is that what you meant? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> she answered for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're always available. Thank you for making us your favorite department ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, Please, get, please join us downstairs. There's a little bit more to eat. There's coffee downstairs, and then we'll make our way through the general session. Thank you. Thank you.